For centuries, Central Asia's two big rivers, the Amu Darya and the Sur Darya, fed the gigantic Aral Sea in the middle of the desert. After thousands of kilometers running through drylands and irrigation areas, the trails of the powerful rivers slowly get lost. What once used to be the fourth largest inland sea in the world, with an area of 68,000 kilometers squared, has been decreasing for decades. Since 1960, the sea's surface area has shrunk by approximately 80% and its volume by 90%. The Aral Sea split into numerous little lakes. Today, former port cities lie many kilometers away from the water. One example is Moynak. This local sign remains witness to the past wealth and confidence of the town. Moynak used to be Uzbekistan's only port town. Today, the shore of the Aral Sea lies more than 150 kilometers away from here. The sun is blazing down on dusty streets and houses. Only few people can find jobs. In the past, when we still had fish, there were five fish factories here. Canned fish was produced here. Our canned fish was sold abroad. Even Germany, Romania, Czechoslovakia and Bulgaria bought our products because our fish tasted very good. In the past, over 30,000 people earned their living in the fishing industry. Fishermen worked day and night. Large ships with refrigeration facilities made sure that the catch remained fresh during the long trip across the huge lake. It was top quality fish. It was in abundance. So the catch was often twice as heavy as it was expected to be. Thanks to the rich flora and fauna, tourists enjoyed this place as a natural paradise. Kulan and Saiga could be found in the Aral Sea region. There were beaches along the seashore, and vacationers came here from all parts of the Soviet Union. Today, one cannot watch the waves of the Aral Sea from the old pier of the former port of Moynak anymore. Here, the Aral Sea is a dead land, desert and steppe. On the dry bed of the former lake lie the rusting hulls of fishing boats and freighters. Plants and animals have disappeared. The unique ecosystem is destroyed. Houses and streets of the small villages along the former seashore slowly disappear in the dunes. Salt dust transport from the dry bed of the sea, polluted with numerous toxic elements from agricultural and industrial processes, causes health problems. Low life expectancy and a high rate of infant mortality are serious problems. The livelihood for the people living around the Aral Sea is at stake. The biggest part of the former Aral Sea has now turned into a new desert, the Aral Kum. With the shrinking of the lake, an important factor in climate regulation in Central Asia disappeared. Without the sea, the climate here is getting even hotter and drier. The consequences of the Aral Sea tragedy are obvious, but there are some signs of slow recovery. People have recently returned to this place. In some parts of the dry lake bed, exploration for oil and natural gas has begun with success. Primarily, economic considerations will shape the future of the Aral Sea. The northern Aral Sea and Kazakhstan has become one of the few remaining bodies of water in the region. 
Since 2005, the 13 kilometer long Cockerell Dam has collected water in the northern Aral Sea. This important project was funded by the World Bank. It proves that right steps are taken. The hope for the return of water is well founded. Meanwhile, the northern Aral Sea covers a surface of 3,000 kilometers squared. The government of Kazakhstan plans to raise the existing dam or build another one. Possibly one day, water will return to the former port towns. From the fishing village of Tastubek, fishermen go out to the sea again. This would not have been possible 10 years ago. With the recovery of nature, people return to the lifestyles they had lost many years ago. The earlier critical water salinity decreased. Water became much clearer and fish stocks grow each year. Fishermen in boats return with their rich catch. Carp, pike, pike perch and nearly two dozen other species are again at home in the sea. Hope is returning to the Aral Sea, thanks to the cooperation of national and international partners. Working together in confidence with a clear vision will solve the water problems. Countries need to continue to build mutual trust in the Aral Sea Basin. In the end, it is all about a peaceful and better future that we all can share.